Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited because I'm gonna be doing my Sephora haul. I have a lot of products. I purchased a bunch because the sale is going on right now. And then I do also have some that I purchased before the sale that I'm going to show you here today because I haven't hauled these products. I have an addiction to lip products. When I went through and pulled these, I was actually appalled at my own actions. It really showed me that I am a lip product fanatic. I wanna go over everything because the sale is going on right now. It is going to end on Monday, so I wanted to get my packages in and then do this haul. I'm gonna move quickly because I have a lot of products. I'll give you my first reaction or first impression if I've tried them. So I'll leave the information about the sale down below. I'm also gonna link everything that I talk about today down below as well as the makeup that I'm wearing. I can't speak today as well as the makeup that I'm wearing. We're off to a great start, Babs. So hopefully I can get through this video without mumbling too much. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And if you enjoy Sephora hauls, give this video a thumbs up. And let's go ahead and get into what I picked up from Sephora. Okay, because I have so much to go over, I do want to go in order so that I don't get too overwhelmed. So a repurchase for me is the Freck Rich Moisturizer. I have gone through this literally for, I think like the past five or six sales. This just works beautifully with my skin type, which is Combo. This has vitamin C in it. It's a really thick formula, but for some reason it sits beautifully under makeup. I find that this gives me the hydration I need without becoming greasy or oily. I really like that this isn't a thick layer that makes my texture look enhanced. So this is a go-to product for me. If I had to get rid of all of my other just like basic moisturizers to go under makeup, this is the one that I'm going to rock with. Another repurchase because Glowish is going out of business. I kind of was like, oh, who cares really? Because I don't love a lot of products from the Glowish line. But then I was like, wait, wait, wait. The Blur Jam, the Blur Jam. So I have two of these that are about half empty and I thought, you know what, I need to get another one, get the 20% off. This is my favorite for blurring my pores. This one is silicone free and it just is so lightweight. You just smooth it right in your T-zone and it does control oil without making you dry. So this is a holy grail product, the best smoothing, blurring primer that I have tried. It's been a favorite for quite a while. I think really honestly since it came out. And no surprise here, I did also restock my favorite setting spray. This is the Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray. This was like a dark horse. This one just came out of nowhere and blew me away. I have gone through, I wanna say maybe three bottles of this, and I do have a couple in different areas of my house. It's such a fine mist, so it's one of those that doesn't leave droplets, it doesn't have an overwhelming scent, and it doesn't make you sticky or greasy, but it also doesn't make you like matte and tight. It just kinda keeps your makeup where it's at all day long. So if you want something that's not gonna change the finish of your makeup, but lock it in, this is my go-to. Moving on to complexion products, I did did only pick up one new foundation. This is the Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. I got the shade 13, which is light, medium, cool olive. So it has a squeezy tube. I thought that I was gonna love this and I just can't figure this out. I've only tried it a couple times, but it just really enhances my pores, which I am kind of surprised by because I saw Julia Adams do an ad for them and her skin looked absolutely flawless. I was like, I'm sold. But every time I apply it on me, it feels like it's a little bit like sticky and it gunks up in my pore area and my pores just look so pronounced even after I use powder. Everything about this was screaming, hey, it's gonna be for you. It's supposed to be sort of like a self-setting, more on the matte side, which I typically go for. And even swatching it, it looks beautiful, but for some reason, on my skin, it just makes my skin look super textured, which is like the number one thing I don't want. I can't get this to work for me as of yet. Okay, next I wanna talk about a category that I usually go a little bit hard in, and this sale was no different. I did pick up quite a few blushes. Now, some of these I did get before, and I've talked about them very briefly, but I wanted to go over them being the House Labs. So this is the new repackaged version, but two new shades. We have French Rosette, 
which is what I'm wearing today. And then we also have Fire Moon. These are smaller and the packaging is different. The formula is the same. So this one is more of that warm bronzy shade, kind of like Patrick Ta She's So LA. Has a little bit of rosiness in there, but really, you know, nothing over the top. And then this is my favorite new one, which is French Rosette. This one is really beautiful, like a peachy terracotta sort of color, and it just kind of brings your cheeks to life. These are pigmented. I love this formula, so use a light hand. This is actually something I mentioned in my recommendations because this blush formula is absolutely incredible. The other powder blush formula I did grab was the Rare Beauty. So these are the new powder blushes, but they're luminous. I do have a full demo of these, but I ended up liking these and sort of not liking them. It was kind of like a love-hate. I do have a little bit of one of them on my cheeks as a topper today, but these are incredibly, incredibly metallic almost, and they do have a little bit of glitter in them if you look really closely. They do enhance your texture, which I feel like is why this is such a polarizing launch because a lot of people just don't want their texture enhanced, me included. Now, I like Happy and then Joy, which is the one I swatched here. And again, I like these more as a topper. So just using them on the high point of my cheekbones just to give me that glowy look. So I really feel like these are for those of you that don't mind your texture and your pores looking enhanced and you really want that beautiful, almost like an iridescent glow because some of these do have kind of like different color reflex in them. This is more of a blush topper in my opinion. I did also pick up a product from a brand I've never tried before. This is Bosma. So this is new at Sephora. This brand was originally viral, I think for their stick foundation, which I've never tried. I typically don't love stick foundations, but I did pick up this peach cream blush from them. Now I haven't tried this yet, but I've swatched it and I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this formula Really haven't heard much hype about these blushes in particular. The formula feels really balmy and quite sheer So when I blend this out, it doesn't give me much color even blending it out It just looks a little blotchy maybe a little bit too balmy and too sheer for my liking So let me know if you have tried this formula, but i'm glad that I only went in to get one But a formula that I do love I had to get this new shade This is say beauty and this is the dew blush in baby. It's a really really beautiful Very cool toned pink now this formula is quite dewy. I feel like I just saw fly. Oh my gosh. You know what? I can't get any peace in here. I can't get any peace. Every time I try to film, there's like a fly here, there, everywhere, rubbing its hands together on my lights. So moving back to the blush, this is a really dewy formula, but it's very thin. It does look very glowy and it's not the most pigmented, but this shade just really drew me in. You can see how like wet this is. This is one of those that I feel like people that have dry skin or just love that super glowy look would really like. And because it doesn't have any shimmer in it, it doesn't enhance your texture. So I wanna try this out, see how this looks on my skin, but I really couldn't resist because of the shade. I did also grab a new product. This is from Give Beauty. This is the Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Cheek Tint. Wow, collagen cheek tint. I am honestly struggling, you guys. I cannot get it together. And my hair will not stay out of my face. I have like sensory issues the older I get. And it's why you see my hair up a lot of the time because my bangs just want to continually get in my face and they're just constantly driving me nuts and I'm constantly pushing them back, then they fall forward, back, forward. Like honest to God, I don't know how I used to wear my hair down all the time because I can't stand it. It drives me absolutely bonkers. I have sensory issues that cause me rage. If anybody can relate, please let me know. But I always teeter between, wow, you always have your hair up and you look a mess. And I spend so much time like fiddling with my bangs. That's a side note, I should calm down. <laughs> but this is the new Give Beauty Cheek Tint. I got the shade Peony in the Cheek Tint. So this is a little bit more sheer than I had anticipated. It kind of reminds me of the Say Beauty in terms of the texture because it's very thin, but it's not quite as glowy and it does sort of set down a little bit once you blend it out. I think this is a gorgeous shade though. 
The Say one in Baby is really light and almost pastel with that purple. This is more of just like a hot pink. So I'm interested to try this out. I hope to try this in like a trying new makeup coming up. Moving on to the last complexion product I picked up. I did grab one of the Fenty Beauty Demi Glow Light Diffusing Highlighter. So I got this shade 02 Prosecco. I thought this looked so pretty when I saw a couple different influencers use this on their channel. And I don't know if I'm feeling the same in person, if that makes sense. It's a really interesting formula. It almost has that baked feel, but it's still a powder. It's like a really soft baked feel, but I feel like it translates a little bit dry on my face and it almost doesn't have any emollients in it. So when I think about like other baked that I love, like the ABH uh, Omrezi, that one has like no powder kick up and it has this emollient feel or creaminess to it. So it really sticks to the skin. It doesn't fly all over and it doesn't give you that sort of glittery effect. I just notice that it kind of dusts around a little bit. Now that I am touching this more in depth, I feel like the formula feels very similar to the Rare Beauty powder blushes. It just has that really thin baked texture that can kind of fly all over and I think that's where you get the little bit of like glitter particles and things like that. So for me, I like this more when I spray my brush with a setting spray, but I was expecting to be like blown away and I'm just kind of not. So I have to keep trying this out and I'll update you guys on what I think. Okay, now I wanna talk about palettes. I have picked up a few palettes and I am super late to the game, but I already did mention this. I'm wearing this with another palette today. So this is the new Makeup by Mario, the neutrals master matte palette i love the original but it does lean a little bit warmer so this is more on the neutral side this formula is definitely more buildable so i think it's great for beginners and it's just something that i reach for a lot on the daily very neutral light everyday type of shade, so I definitely recommend this. I did also try this for the first time today. I only tried two shades, but this is the Hyper Natural Face Palette from Natasha Denona. So I went in with this really beautiful shimmery shade on my lid, just very lightly. It's kind of just like a glitter topper. And then I did end up using this metallic shade for my wing, and I thought it really was easy to use. Now, of course, this is supposed to be like an everyday palette. I have not tried the bronzers or the blushes yet. So it's more of a natural palette. I really didn't see a lot of people recommend this, but I did purchase this before the sale. And then again, just never got to review it. And I'm kind of interested to play around with it more and see if I do see a value in it, especially for those of you that just do like a simple everyday look, kind of like a one and done type of situation. But again, it's just so new to me that I can't really give you my full thoughts yet. Okay, now I wanna get in to the big daddy category, which is gonna be lip products. I went a little crazy. We're not shocked. So let's just move through this as quick as possible. I want to talk about this lipstick that I bought a while back and honestly just used it for the first time today. So this is the lipstick from Makeup by Mario. I think these are called the Super Satin Lipsticks. I picked up the shade Flat Iron and I'm wearing it right now. This is a thick creamy formula. I really like the way it feels on the lips. I could see this being good for those of you that have dry lips and really want something that's gonna give you that pillowy, cushiony hydration. Very pigmented as well. Really shocked at how much I like this shade too. So I grabbed that and I also grabbed one of the new Maracuja Juicy Lip Vinyls from Tarte. So this is in the shade Sheer Lotus. I feel like every brand is trying to dupe Tarte and they keep coming out with different I don't know, formulations, like this is the vinyl. I like this more than the other ones because it has that like really shiny, almost jelly look to it, which is why I think they called it vinyl. This one has like a light sort of mint scent, which I think it is supposed to be plumping or all of the tart maracujas. I think they have a little bit of like that tingly plumping effect, but it's not painful. I didn't smell this makeup by Mario. This one has like a really light smell too, kind of similar to a MAC lipstick, if you know that scent. So both of these products so far, I like them. I did also grab a couple luxury lip products. I did pick up one of the new YSL Love Shine Lip Oil Sticks. I grabbed 
have the shade 204. These are so hard to see on the bottom. So these are supposed to be like a reformulated version of their Rouge Volupte lip shines, which I absolutely love. They also have the candy glazes, which are really shiny and beautiful. This is interesting. It feels really lightweight, but not as shiny, I think, as the original, just upon swatching it. This does have some pigment to it, and it does have the same scent, which is like a fruity scent. This was just such a cult favorite product that I'm like, why did they change it? I know some people were upset about the packaging. I do think the packaging is still cute because it has like this pink background here, but the original packaging was just so beautiful and luxe. So I'm not sure about that yet. I did try this out and I have been liking it. So this is the Prada Monochrome. I think this is the Hyper Matte Lipstick and I got the shade Alabaster. So this is a very, very, very light shade. Some of my other lipstick is actually on it because I do use this in the center of my lips just to lighten. Even though it's hyper matte, I feel like it has a little bit of creaminess in there, so it would really be flattering and almost like blurs your lip lines. I think this is a beautiful formula. The only thing I don't like is the scent. It has that like floral, rich type of scent, which it does make sense because it is Prada Beauty, but I don't notice anything that I taste. So that's kind of where I draw the line. If I'm like tasting flowers, I can't do it, but it really is just like a light scent. It doesn't bother me that much. If I was gonna get a couple more shades, I would definitely go in store to try them on. Another luxury product I had my eye on when I did my wish list. I ended up purchasing from Armani Beauty. So this is the Prisma Glass lip gloss and I got the shade 04 which is that really pretty cherry color. A couple of you had said that you had seen some really really good reviews on this. This is interesting. It's very shiny but it doesn't really swatch like a gloss. I don't smell anything in this. I'm gonna try this on. The promo photos were so beautiful. The model's lips just looked like insanely glossy and tinted. It almost feels like a lip gel. It's not as pigmented as I thought it was gonna be either. I don't know how to feel about this. It doesn't have the texture that I was anticipating. I don't know if I'm blown away, which was my worry just because this is such a, you know, pricey product. I feel like a lot of times luxury lip products can kind of be hit or miss and the lip products just keep coming because here's yet another luxury lip product that I picked up. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Plump Gasm Lip Gloss. So I got fair medium. I think the packaging is really cute. It's a little bit chunky, but it's just kind of that really girly vibe. Now these have some pigment to them. They're very, very shiny. You can see right there. I actually do like that there's color payoff. They're not thick and they're not sticky. There's a pretty big doe foot applicator on here too. The only thing is these tingle. I don't know if I necessarily notice like my lips look bigger, but they kind of tingle a little bit intensely. So you have to like that. Otherwise I feel like you're gonna be like, this is painful, I don't enjoy this. But it is really glossy and makes your lips look juicy. Doesn't last the longest, again, because it's not thick, but the tingle is definitely there and I don't know if I love that. Another item I mentioned in my wish list video was these Gisu lip oils. So they came out with three new shades. These are the honey infused lip oils. I just love the packaging. So the complaint in the past has been that these smell like olive oil. I think they tried to switch it up with these and add some sort of fragrance. So this first shade is called Mango Passion Punch and I get mango, but I also am getting that olive oil scent with this one. I don't get that with the one that really stands out to me, which is Strawberry Sorbet. So you can see the pigment on these is pretty nice, which I actually like. Strawberry Sorbet has more fragrance and it just covers up that olive oil scent. I've also heard the watermelon one is really nice. That's the one with like shimmer. These feel a little bit more thick than the original one, but they're not sticky at all. And I'm actually really happy to see some color on these. I would definitely recommend the strawberry one if you've been looking at them. And I am considering, I'm considering getting the glittery, you know, the watermelon one, but honestly, no, I do not need it. 
I'm going way over the top with lip products already. Speaking of lip products, I did also get one of the K Skin Lip Balms. This is the SPF 30 in Irie Rose. I love this formula and I have a couple of the shades, but I wanted to get the more pigmented one. These are incredibly shiny and they come in a squeeze tube. You can see like, look at how shiny that is. I just had to have this color. This is a black owned brand and this is my favorite SPF lip balm. The clear one, I go through like water in the summertime. They just smell incredible. They're super glossy on the lips. They last forever. And you can see it actually has pigment here, which is just super pretty. And then of course, I already showed you guys these. I recommended them in my recommendations, but I didn't haul them yet. These are the Ula Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatments. I am obsessed with these. Super shiny, super nourishing, and I love the scent. So I like this strawberry one the best, which is right here. They're not sticky, they just hydrate your lips. Absolutely amazing. And I love just the feel of them, everything about them. They are just absolutely stunning. Then I also have the original, which is just clear. It has like a yellow tint, but really it just comes out clear. I think this one has like a lemony scent to it, but these are absolutely incredible, like my new favorite. They are up there with the Naturium, but they're thinner and I would say even more hydrating, a little bit more sheer, but wow, I love these. I did also pick up one of the new lip oil formulas that I wanted to try. So this is the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Oil and I got Pink Magic. I think it smells like watermelon. So this formula, I'm not in love with it. I think it's fine. It's just super thin. Honestly, there's like no color. So this shade was supposed to be like the most, you know, brightening pink shade and it's completely clear. And from what I've seen online, pretty much every shade is clear. This smells really yummy, like a watermelon jelly rancher, but I don't find it to be overly nourishing. It's a little thin for my taste. It's just not really giving it to me. So I definitely would not tell you to go out and get this. It's just kind of fine. And for the price, you know, I expect better. I do love these Give Beauty. These are the Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Gels. So I mentioned these in my recommendations. They're brand new to me, but I have two shades here. The first one is Marigold. Now these are extremely high shine. They have, you know, a little bit of pigment that kind of shears out on the lips. They smell incredible. I don't know. It's like caramel cake or something. What is that smell? It's the same thing I think as their lip glosses. Now these are extremely thick. So a little goes a long way. You do not want to just like slather this on because they are very thick. They are sticky, but I find them to be very, very, very hydrating. So I just put a little bit in the center of my lips and these hang on forever because they are so thick. I actually like this, but again, I like a sticky gloss. So if you hate sticky, you will hate these with a passion. Do not even go near them. But if you like something that hangs on and is super nourishing and really glossy, I think you would like them. I did also pick up another shade of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Velvets. So I absolutely adore the shade Kiss. This formula is super thin, extremely pigmented, and it's almost like a powder on your lips. So this is the shade Kiss. They just wear super well. They can be a little bit drying, so I put a little bit of my Ula Balm underneath. So I went ahead and picked up Peachy Nude. This was the other light shade. I haven't used this one yet, but I just love this type of formula. This is kind of what I reach for most days. If I want my makeup to last, I just blot some sort of like lip cream or soft matte lip product on my lips, and then I will go in with a gloss or something like that as the day goes on. But I love this formula because it is so thin and powdery. It doesn't have that like dry down that gets super cakey, cracks, and just really looks awful as it wears. These type of lip products wear more gracefully, but they do stay on longer than a bullet. So that's why I love them. These are the two lightest shades and I would like to see more shades come out in this range. So I'm looking for that, but I absolutely love these. I think Kiss is going to be like one of my all-time favorite lipsticks. Another new lip product that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I went back and got two more shades of the Freck lip liners. So I'm wearing the shade, I think number four today. These are incredibly, incredibly pigmented, super thin, and 
I am not joking you, these do not come off. Like you have to scrub to get these off. I am so impressed with this formula. They are so lightweight and creamy and they really do not budge. This is the shade four. This is three, which is definitely more cool toned. And then I did pick up shade one. I have not even swatched this one yet. I am just absolutely floored by this formula. I feel like this may be the best lip formula of the year. It's rivaling pretty much every lip liner I've ever loved, which is like the ABH, the Makeup by Mario. Lightweight, pigmented, and it lasts. Like it does not budge. Even with all of these lip oils and glosses on top, I have to recommend these. Like if you have been looking for a nude lip liner and you like long wear, I'm telling you, add these to cart. I'm honestly considering getting like every shade. It's a little unhinged, but you know what? It's kind of my vibe. Okay, moving on to fragrance. I do just have a couple to mention. I did already go over my thoughts on the Forever Mood Jackie Aina fragrances. So I'm gonna link that video down below. I don't wanna go over it too much because I did go in depth about what I thought about these. But this is the new line from Forever Mood, which is owned by Jackie Aina. She has four new fragrances. There's like travel sizes, the full size. And then I was able to snag this discovery set. I think it's sold out now but my favorite has to be the NDA and hard to get. So I will link them separately down below, but I did pick this up and then I also picked up the Sol de Janeiro Chirosa 59. I love their body mist. They all just smell kind of light, fun, airy, sweet. And this one is just a really sweet, soft floral. Vanilla orchid, sugared violet, and sheer sandalwood. I typically don't like floral, but because it has that sandalwood and those sweet notes in it. I really like this. These are just very easy to throw on, put it in your bag, in your car. They don't last as long as obviously like a fragrance, but I think for the price point, you can't beat it. And I have pretty much like every scent from them and I really like all of them. Okay, so now that we've gotten through all the makeup, I wanna talk hair. So I did pick up a few products. So the first one is the Color Wow Money Mist. So this is a light leave-in conditioner for glossy hair. I absolutely love the Money Mask. It's just super, super smoothing it makes your hair like silk so I definitely wanted to grab this leave-in and I'm interested to try it I just haven't you know washed my hair since I got it so really excited about that now I have tried this and I'm a little bit undecided this is the k18 air wash dry shampoo so this actually is not an aerosol and it's not a powder so I feel like a lot of times you see the dry shampoos and they're just like a powder that squirts out this is a liquid it's kind of like water and you just spray it one to three sprays on each section of your hair and it's supposed to kind of revive it. Now people seem to either love this or hate it. I've had a lot of you comment and say it's the best and then I've had people say it's horrible. I'm sort of in the middle because I feel like it really did help with my oils when I did try it but it made my hair very very textured almost like straw and I couldn't brush through it. So I could see how this would be good for those of you that don't mind that textured feel but I was having a hard time brushing through it. So that kind of makes me nervous in the sense that I don't want to damage my hair I mean, I literally could not brush through where I put this It just gave me so much texture Which I don't mind because I have very fine hair that doesn't hold a curl So I almost want to try this in different ways Maybe I used a little too much, but I'm interested to keep testing this out I think it was sold out the last time I checked I feel like it's going like viral on TikTok But again, I feel like it's a super polarizing product because people either love it or hate it All right, and to finish off the haul, I did grab Grab a couple products from L'Oreal Pro. So this is a brand I'd never tried, but I did get some deluxe samples and I was really impressed. And then I started reading up about it. People seem to really like this. So I grabbed the Absolute Repair Molecular Shampoo. This is really supposed to be good for damaged hair, dry hair, bleached hair, which hello, that is me. Now I will say that the scent on this is a little bit strong. It's sort of like a cologne scent, but this lathered incredibly well. And I just felt like my hair felt really nice after it and then I was reading up and people were raving about this so this is the absolute repair protein and quinoa mask so it's a deep conditioning mask I wonder what this smells like Oh, this smells good. It's like a really light, fresh scent, almost a little fruity. People were swearing by this, and again, my hair is bleached, so anything that I can use to repair it and keep it healthy. And then I did also grab the Absolute Repair. I think this is a leave-in mask. It's the peptides bonder and amino acids, so I think this is like a leave-in. So I kind of wanted to focus on really deep conditioning, and I wanted to use all three of these and see if I notice a difference, because I'm a huge fan of like the K18. I'm also 
a huge fan of Olaplex and the Redken Acidic Bonding Line. That's one of my favorites, but I wanted to give this a go and I figured getting the 20% off would be a good time. So if you've used the L'Oreal Pro hair products, I'd love to hear your feedback down below. All right, guys, so I think that is finally everything that I picked up from the sale so far. I am waiting on a couple packages like the Hourglass Press Powder and a couple other small things. But other than that, this is all the products that I got. I feel like I went a little crazy with the lip products. It was kind of shocking when I really took a look at it. So I need to, you know, reel that in and be a little bit more choosy with that. But I would love to hear what you've picked up. If you found any new favorites or if you've tried some stuff that you were just disappointed in, please leave your thoughts down below because I'm sure I'll be making another order before the sale is over. So of course I will link everything that I showed today down below as well as the makeup that I'm wearing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.